Hi, this is Mark Meyer from MarTech Hero. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use a countdown clock in your emails. Basically, if you're looking for a way to increase engagement with your emails, then adding a countdown clock is a perfect solution. Not only does it add a sense of urgency to the message, but if you make the most of this technique, it can even help you get more click-throughs and conversions. With a countdown clock in place, your subscribers will be sure to read the content and then they act fast since they don't want to miss out. Okay, I just jumped over to my Gmail account just to show you what a countdown timer may look like in an email. So this is just a test email I created that is offering a 50% off sale that ends in four days, 11 hours, and 14 minutes and 55 seconds and counting. So you can see how this can create some sort of urgency for the recipient to hurry up and hit the shop now button before the deal is over. So you see these a lot in sales and you also see these countdown clocks used for things like signing up for a webinar, um, even conference registration. Oftentimes conferences give you a discount if you sign up by a certain date and these are often used in those as well. So there's a lot of different kinds of these countdown timers. The one I like the best is called MailTimer. It's at MailTimer.io. So basically what these do is they generate you a short HTML snippet containing an image tag that you simply paste into your HTML. So this can be used in an email or you can even paste this HTML in a website. So every time someone opens an email containing your timer, the MailTimer.io server generates an animated GIF in real time. Therefore, customers always see an accurate countdown timer. So this is the biggest difference between MailTimer.io countdown clocks and other ones I have tested, and I'll explain that more a little later. So let's jump over to MailTimer. I'll just show you what this looks like. So this is the home page where you could uh, sign up for uh, a free trial. They actually have a free plan. We'll get more into uh, plans and prices later, but they do have a free plan that you could just play around with it and test it out. I already have an account, so I'm just gonna jump over to my dashboard. So this dashboard uh, on MailTimer is pretty self-explanatory. Each plan gives you a certain number of views or timer views per month. So for example, my plan has 200,000 views per month. And so far down here, it says I've used 13,360 of those. Um, and then up here, the dashboard says how many views I've used in the last week. So basically, when you send out an email, a timer view is counted every time someone opens an email and loads the images in which your timer is on. So if you send out 10,000 emails, but only 5,000 people open the email, then only 5,000 views are counted towards you. So going a little bit more over this dashboard down here, it just shows you some recent timers that you created. Uh, I actually just created a couple of these yesterday just to test this out. And it tells you how many views each of those timers had. So we're just gonna go ahead and create a new timer and I'll show you how this all works. So I'm gonna go up here to the upper left and just simply click create timer. So up here, we have a few options. Under the general tab, there's a few different timer types we could choose from. The standard one is what most people are familiar with. It just, you set an expiration date in which you want the timer to stop counting down to. Uh, the run when email is opened. So if you select this one, and if you send the timer out, the timer countdown doesn't begin until the email is actually opened by the recipient. Uh, the run when email is sent is very similar to this one, except it starts counting down when the email is sent, not when it's opened. And finally, they have the one dynamic end date, which within the HTML snippet that they supply you, you could put a variable in there. So different recipients of your email could be passed a different countdown clock, if you will, a different date of expiration for their countdown clock. For our purposes, we're just gonna use the standard one. So the end time is just what it sounds like. It's the time that the timer runs out. So for this, we're just gonna select February 1st. And then down here, this is in military time in five minute intervals. So we're just gonna say 0000, which is basically midnight on February 1st. 
Then it says, what time zone are you in? So I'm actually in Chicago. So I'm going to select America's. Chicago. There it is, finally. And there we have it. It's counting down to February 1st at midnight in Chicago. Up here, we could change the template in the upper right. So I'm going to select that. And it gives you a few different templates you could pick. Let's go ahead and use this one. And then down here, you could toggle these on or off. So if right now, it's telling us five days, 10 hours, 29 minutes, and so on. If we don't want the days to appear, but we want all those days encapsulated into the hours instead for some reason, we could turn off the days. But we're fine with the days like this. This looks good. So we're going to go to the next uh, option here. Most of this is pretty self-explanatory. The font size, obviously the font size. The color of the font, it's uh, this blackness right here. The show leading zeros. Right now it says 05, for example. If I turn that off. It'll just say five. I kind of like the look of uh, the leading zeros. This individual colors for counters. I could make uh, each of these counter colors a different color if I so desired. And then the color of the, this blue part. And then you can't really see it here. Let me change this to color two in this particular one. I'll change it to like a, a gray. It's going to regenerate here. And now you can see that it's uh, the gray, so you can see it more ticking down like a clock. And then for some reason, if you wanted this to go the other way, to tick the other way, uh, you could toggle this. Next, we're going to go to the labels. So this is the font for the labels and the color for those. And like we could before, we could change the color for each of the labels if we so choose. The labels being, of course, days, hours, minutes, and seconds. Down here, it tells you what the label is. Uh, like it says days. So if I change it to days until for some reason, um, you'll see it changed that. So you could put other labels for each of those, but we'll just keep it at days. Next, I'm going to go to container and positioning. Uh, this is the background color. Uh, defaults to this white. It says leave it empty if you want it transparent. Uh, if you do have a background color, let's say it's blue or something, you could have rounded corners. This is only available in the pro edition of this. I actually don't own the pro edition of this, but if you did, you could have a background image behind this. I don't have that, so uh, we won't go into that. So then finally, advanced. So at expiration, after 5 days, 10 hours, 27 minutes, 17 seconds, what do you want it to appear? The default is just to show zeros. Um, you also have, you can restart it, you can show a message, or you can make the whole timer just completely disappear, so you can play around with that. If you want a title for the timer, you could turn this on and it's just going to load this up here. I tend to just to put that within the other HTML that surrounds this. And then finally, dynamic links. This is also only available in the pro edition and I don't have that edition, like I said. But if you did, the, if you click the link on the timer, it would go one spot um, to one URL if the timer was still active, like not at all zeros. And then once the time expired, if you clicked it, it would take you to another URL. So I don't have that, so we can't do that. There is a way, even though it's not in any of these menus, there is a way just to have uh, the hard code in if, if someone happens to click the timer where you want it to go. And I'll show you that shortly. So that all looks good. Um, it says down here the dimensions of this timer. In this case, it's 523 by 155. Uh, I wouldn't worry too much about that because we can actually resize that within the HTML. So if this all looks good, 
Um, oh, one more thing I should mention. Up here in the upper left, the default name of this is My Timer. I'll just call it time, Timer Demo. And then if it all looks good, uh, we could send a test email to us and it'll just send a test email with the code here, or uh, we could save and publish. I'm just gonna save and publish. And then right here, it gives us the code that we, we need to implement this on our website or our email. And up here, that they added this uh, not too long ago, this align feature, which basically just aligns the timer left, center, or right. Uh, basically, it just changes this text align right here. So there you have it. Uh, the code right here, basically, here's the image source that I told you about. So that's a GIF file, and it's an animated GIF file, but every time someone opens up this email, it's going to recalculate how, many, how much time is left. And this is what what's the big difference between this one and their competitors on other countdown clocks. And I'll show you an example of that soon. So we'll just copy this out. I'll paste it on the side, another screen here. And then we'll go to the dashboard. And as you can see, uh, our new timer is right here. And there's no views left because we don't have it implemented anywhere. So now I just hop back over to my email editor that I use just to show you how to input this HTML snippet that MailTimer.io supplied to us. Now I use Stripo.email, which in my opinion is the best email design tool there is, but you could use any design tool you want, whether it's within MailChimp or Constant Contact or, or Stripo or whatever. All of them, obviously you could import, input, um, HTML snippets into them, so it's not an issue whatsoever. So in this case, I'm gonna go over to blocks and I'm gonna drag this HTML snippet code over here. And then I'm gonna pull up my notepad. The top of this is where the I copied the actual code that we got from mailtimer.io. So I made a few modifications to it and whether you wanna do this to yours is up to you. So one thing I added, I just did the align a little bit differently just so it plays more nice with Strapo. Uh, and I also added this uh, URL to it. What this does, if somebody clicks on the countdown clock, it actually takes them to wherever I want them to go. Uh, by default, it, it doesn't take you anywhere if you click on it. So I, I put that in there. And then I just added this class just once again, so it plays nice with Stripe and my other design on this element. So I'm just gonna copy this and I'll put this code into the comment section below uh, as well. So if you guys wanna play around with it, I'm gonna paste this in. And there you have it. Now our countdown clock was added to this email. So you might notice that it has this white background that probably doesn't look that great. And the reason it has a white background is if you recall, when we originally set it up on mail timer, I just selected the default white background. So if we would have changed that to um, a transparent background, you wouldn't see this white. Or if I would have picked the same color as the rest of my email, it would blend in more like it did in the original one that I showed you guys in the video. So that's it. That's how this works. Now, I just want to show you, I talked slightly about how this is better than the alternatives. And let me just show you why. So I'm gonna go to structures and how you do this in each email uh, client is of course differently. So don't worry about that. But stripo.email actually has their own countdown clock timer it's called. So I can go right here, drag this in. Uh, it's asking me when do I want the Countdown clock to end. I'm going to select the same. Okay, we'll just pick this one. Um, and then we we, we could um, let's regenerate in here. There you go. It's it's kind of small, but you, you see it in there here. I can try to.
Anyway, don't concern yourself with the format of how or the style of it, but you can see it. It, it added a countdown clock. Um, it's a lot. I might have selected the wrong zone here, but it's, it's basically um, two countdown clocks. So you would think that every countdown clock is the same, but they're actually not. And here I'm going to jump back over to Gmail and show you why. Okay, I'm back over in a Gmail account. Uh, this is the test I actually set up um, yesterday just to show you guys. I waited a day to show you what happens. The countdown clock on the top and the countdown clock on the bottom were both originally set for the exact same end date and the exact same end time. The bottom one is from mailtimer.io, the one we just walked through. The top one is the countdown timer from Stripo. So here's the difference. The one from Stripo, when you when you originally open it, it's going to load the animated GIF and it's going to start counting down. However, Gmail, in their case, is going to save the cached image of that GIF to your to your own account, so it doesn't have to keep fetching the same image over and over. It's just it saves uh, the calls to the server. Mailtimer.io has a way around that, that every time someone opens it, that it's going to make a new call to the server to get the most accurate countdown clock time. And this is the biggest difference between countdown clocks. So basically, when, the, when it's first sent out, they look identical. When the person, person first opens them, they'll always have the same days, hours, minutes, and seconds. It's if that same person goes back an hour later, two hours later, five days later, it's going to give really misleading information for a lot of countdown clocks because it's going to load the cached image instead of retrieving an updated animated GIF. So that's why, by far, I think the best one is mailtimer.io. Like I said, stripo.email is a great, great platform. I just don't think that their countdown clock is as good as mailtimer. So lastly, I said I would talk about how MailTimer charges and how much it is. So I jumped back over to the MailTimer.io site. And if we go to pricing, uh, you can go down here. You can sign up for free uh, just to try it out. And then if you want to expand your plan or get more time reviews and have the branding removed, uh, the lowest plan is only $7 a month. That's 100,000 time reviews. And then uh, you can go up from there. You know, small 500,000 time reviews is everything in micro, of course. It has it has the custom fonts and background images. And then medium, it has the dynamic links. Uh, the custom domains. The custom domains is, like in our case, the domain that it's calling is mailtimer.io. Uh, a custom domain is you could change this so it doesn't, reference mailtimer.io it references whatever custom domain you want to create for it and then there's the premium and as you can see the price keeps going up and the number of views you get keeps going up so you can always try it out for free or just sign up for the you know very inexpensive seven dollars a month or the other option is if i jump over to AppSumo, they do have a deal it's a lifetime deal and this is what i have uh, it's a one-time purchase of $49. And what you get with that, scroll down here. Uh, if you just buy one tier, like one code for $49, you get 100,000 time reviews a month. Uh, if you buy two of them, like two times 49, you get 500,000 time reviews and so on and so forth. So this is a great deal. It's a one-time fee, $49. You have it for life, 100,000 time reviews a month. And it's, it's just good forever. Now, my plan, you might have noticed, I have 200,000 time reviews a month. And uh, don't hold me to this. I don't know if they're still doing it. But usually, uh, they'll give you 100,000 time reviews a month. And in the past, they would email people who bought the plan. And they'd be like, thanks for buying. If you write a good review or an honest review, I should say. It doesn't even have to be a positive review. If you write an honest review about them, they'll double your time reviews. I don't know if they're still doing that, but that's why I have 200,000 time reviews, which is which is plenty for my uh, mailing needs. So anyway, that in a nutshell is um, MailTimer. So check it out. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. And thanks a lot for watching.